So you got some new speakers on a sale that have bigger, better bass drivers in them, or maybe you already have some large speakers and have been thinking about this for a while now, but you could never really make a decision. Are you leaving bass performance on the table by not setting your speakers to large? Well, let's talk about that. What's up guys, Brad here. So it's that time of year for sales on speakers and new audio and video equipment, which means quite a few folks out there, maybe even some of you have picked up some new gear on sale that you've had your eye on for a while. I mean, maybe you're upgrading from some smaller bookshelf speakers to tower speakers with bigger woofers, or maybe you're just getting bigger, more capable bookshelf speakers. And that's got you kind of wondering if you could potentially squeeze out better bass and more performance from your audio system by setting your speakers to large in your receiver or pre-pro. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about that and share my experiences with you trying to get my speakers and subwoofers to play nice together when I set my mains to large. Spoiler alert here, it's not as easy as just turning the setting on and calling it a day. It did require quite a bit of tinkering on my part to get usable sound, and even then, it was far from perfect, but I will talk about that soon enough and show you some measurements I did in Room EQ Wizard to better illustrate my experience. But I do wanna stress that every room, speaker, and system are different, so just remember that my measurements may not necessarily reflect what you'd get in your room. Now, I do want to touch on why this topic comes up a lot, and in order to do that, we need to sort of understand what bass management is and what it does. Now, most, if not all, receivers and pre-pros do have some type of bass management built into them, which is more or less controlled by this one single setting, speaker size, which gives you the option of either large or small. So when this is set to small, you're basically routing all of the low bass information to your subwoofer below the crossover point that you specify, so something like 80 hertz, freeing up amplifier power for your speakers to play the mid-range and higher frequencies, while also giving you more headroom to really crank the volume up higher if you want to. Now, this is essentially the point of bass management in a nutshell. Send the low frequencies to the subwoofer and let your speakers handle the rest. By setting your speakers to large, however, you're effectively disabling the bass management function within your receiver, which is now telling your speakers that are set to large to basically play the entire frequency range. Well, try to at least, and that really depends on your speakers and their effective frequency response. Now, you'll also typically need to enable the LFE Plus main setting, also referred to as double bass on some receiver models, in order to get any sound out of your subwoofers at all, and your main speakers at the same time. Otherwise, you'll only get bass out of the speakers you set to large and likely little to no bass from your subwoofer. So why would someone want to disable bass management by setting their speakers to large? And why is this a topic or discussion that comes up a lot? Well, there are actually many reasons for this and you'll see and hear common ones like, hey, my speakers are expensive and I'm gonna get my money's worth out of them. Or, well, they're rated to go down to 30 hertz, so I'm gonna play them down to 30 hertz. In my opinion, those reasons aren't really good reasons to set your speakers to large because while a speaker may be expensive and rated to go down to a certain frequency, it does not mean it can play that as effectively and as efficiently as a subwoofer could, especially when you put that speaker inside of a room. Your room plays a massive role in the response and performance of your speakers, so you could actually be missing out on performance by just setting them to large and not doing any extra tweaking or legwork. Also, it is worth keeping in mind that low frequency signals, you know, below like 100 hertz, take between 10 to 100 times more power to sound as loud as a mid-range signal at any given volume. And that extra strain on your receiver can end up making things sound distorted at higher volume levels, and it can even reduce your speaker's overall dynamics. There's a reason subwoofers have their own dedicated amps for producing that kind of output, because they really do need all the power they can get. Now, if you're running a pre-pro with separate amplifiers for your speakers, then this may not really be of concern to you. But for those of us, like me, running with just a receiver, it's definitely something to think about. All right, so I've taken some measurements in Room EQ Wizard here, and we'll just run through them. I'll show you what I did. And just to try to kind of illustrate my point of, in my system at least, why setting my fronts too large really doesn't benefit me at all. Starting right off the bat, 
Uh, I have L plus R optimized. This is my first measurement I wanna go over. And this is basically a baseline measurement. This is, with all of my tweaks and everything I've done, you can see here on my notes, my crossover set to 110 hertz. That's what I've determined is the best for my speakers and my room. I have my sub distance set to 16.8 feet. Again, I use the method to determine that and get me the best response overall around my crossover area, which is right around here. So as you can see, it's not perfect. I do have my house curve. I use a mini DSP to set up my four subwoofers. So I have a roll off going uh, from about 20 Hertz down to 30 Hertz, and then it steeply rolls off down here. Now, this is not perfect. No room is perfect. This is about the best I could get it without adding treatments in my room, which I do hope to do at some point. This is the best response I can get at my main listening position. I never run with my speaker set to large in my system at all. Even though Odyssey will determine that they can play down to 40 Hertz, you'll see in a moment why that's not really true. It really just is gonna depend on the speakers in your room. Your speakers may be rated to go down to a certain frequency, like I mentioned earlier, but when placed in your room, you're gonna get different things and different readings, and that's normal. Essentially, this is our starting point. This is my baseline frequency response. This is what I always listen to stuff at. I measured the left and right speaker together, which is how I always do things when I set stuff up. And the main reason I do that is because I listen to music as well as play games and watch movies, multi-channel stuff. Uh, but for stereo music, I do just tend to run the left and right front channels, basically, this pretty good curve here. I measured the, the left and right, and then I also measured the left and right separately. And the reason we wanna do that is we just wanna make sure that there are no issues on either one. So I'm gonna just disable the L plus R measurement. And as we can see, we don't really have any massive nulls or dips in this kind of area here, which is what we're concerned with. Uh, we'll just kind of isolate the left channel right here. And you can see we don't have any massive nulls. We have this up here, which is essentially like a room mode. Again, this is where I'm saying like, you place your speakers in your room, your frequency response is gonna change depending on your room and how things are set up. This is not too bad. Uh, what I don't wanna see down here, especially with how it uh, interacts with the subwoofer at that crossover point is I don't wanna see anything major sloping down. And we have a, a couple small nulls here or there. Going over both the left and right ones, nothing too major, which is, which is fine. So we have the left and right optimized here. I'm gonna disable that. And first thing I did was I set my speakers to large, did the same measurement. I didn't change anything else. You can actually see my notes here. I set my fronts to large, that disables the crossover. And then I didn't change the sub distance. So it's still set at 16.8 feet. And um, wow, yeah, this is uh, awful to, to say the least, uh, especially when we compare it to this. Um, we're losing out all this information here. So even though Odyssey is telling me, hey, your speakers can play down to 40 Hertz, not really effectively in my room. So we can see we have a bunch of issues in here that uh, really are completely gone and eliminated, you know, with my optimized settings essentially. So I'll turn the optimized settings off. Then I measured both the left and right individually like I did before. I would also suggest if you're thinking of running your front set to large, that you do these three base measurements, the left and right together, the left and then the right separately to see where you stand and to see if it's even worth it for you. Because it, I'll be honest, if if your left and right measurements by just setting your speakers to large look like this, you're better off not even going any further in the process. But since I'm making a YouTube video, I went further just to see what I could do. If we turn off both the left and right measurement together and just look at our separate measurements, we can see that the left not doing too hot here. Um, you can actually see this uh, null up here is still in our uh, optimized version. It's a little less pronounced, but it's still there. So we can see the output just really not good in my room at all with my speakers. Again, this is my room, my speakers. It's gonna be different for you. It might be better, it might be worse. So we look at the right channel, it's even worse. Like it's got this massive null here, it really kind of rolls off. This is with Odyssey still applied. So it's technically EQing things down to 40. I unfortunately don't seem to have the measurements before Odyssey, but they were actually worse than this. They were <laughs> way worse than this, believe it or not. So Odyssey is actually helping where it can, but not really helping too much. The next thing I did was I left those speakers set to large and I enabled LFE plus main and suddenly we get this back. 
this output down here, if we compare it to the, the ones where it was just the left and right with no subwoofers, we're, we're starting to regain that output. Like I mentioned in my LFE Plus main video, we're also creating issues as well because anytime you have bass frequencies playing at the same time from different areas and they aren't time aligned properly or in phase, it's the technical term, you're gonna get some cancellation of those bass frequencies. And we can see right here that that's what's happening. What's funny is when you go and turn on the LFE Plus main setting, it actually re-enables the crossovers for the fronts. So I was like, okay, cool. I can just play around the crossovers and maybe uh, get a better response than this before I start messing with the distance. What I found is, I don't know if this is just a glitch on my system or what, or if it's just how it is, I'm not entirely sure. If we look at when I set it to 40 Hertz, which is the lowest, matches pretty much what the standard setting was by default. So then I was like, okay, well, let me raise it up to 60, no change. Raise it up to 80, no change. 90, 100, no change. So my cat is scratching at the door, really? So I don't know if this is actually an issue or a bug. I need to do some more research on this to see if basically the crossovers are getting engaged, like it's just saying they are, but they aren't. The speakers are still just playing a full range signal, regardless if you set the crossover to 250 hertz or 40. I don't know, something weird is kind of going on there, but for now, we'll just say I, I left it at, uh, I believe, 100 hertz. I just, it, none of it changed. Going back to these measurements here. So if we take a look here, again, we got that null. This is the left and right channel set to large, LFE plus main turned on. And then I went and measured the left and right independently to see if there's any crazy issues. And yes, there are because they're playing the same notes or trying to play the same notes, but they're not in phase with each other, not in sync. We're getting some kind of funky nulls. If we isolate the left here, not looking too good, especially if we you know, go by the optimized one, much better curve, much more even slope down than this. It's got all these funky nulls. And then if we look at the right, that one's even worse. We got these massive dips here. And then if we compare it to the optimized one, the highlighted one here, much better overall. So the next thing I did was I started playing around with the distance setting. And really this is the best I was able to come up with. If you look at my notes over here, I basically called this left plus right full optimized. So my fronts were set to large, LFE plus main was enabled. Crossover is essentially disabled because changing the setting has no effect on response. And I changed the sub distance from 16.8 feet to 13.8 feet. So if we just compare it to the one we had before, you see that, that null around 70 Hertz here on the brown line is completely gone, which is good. But if we go and compare this optimized version with LFE plus main enable front set to large to my standard optimized version where they're set to small 110 Hertz crossover, you can still see that the optimized version, much better response overall, starting from the very bottom, going all the way up to, you know, around 160 to 170 Hertz. This was literally the best I can get. And then I went ahead and checked out the left and right channels independently. So this is my left optimized version with all the bells and whistles turned on, front set to large, crossovers disabled, distance changed. And then we compare it to my version with the, the standard stuff that I've already went over, 110 Hertz crossover and all that stuff. Then we see we, again, in this highlighted version, we get a much smoother response. And the same can be said for the right channel. So here we have the fully optimized one with the main set to large and then my optimized one. So you can see here, we're just missing out on a ton of bass right here. And like I said, this is the best I could get. Honestly, I spent about two hours going through this process, getting it all lined up. And if this was my result, I would be kind of disappointed because to me, it really, I couldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't call this usable in my opinion. That's just my opinion. Just not really anything that I would want to go listen to uh, at any extended period of time, which is why whenever I'm playing music, I might be using the left and right front channels only without up mixing or anything like that. But I'm also letting the subwoofers fill in all that low end frequency bass because I would much rather listen to a song with a frequency response in the bass region like this than something like that. Just my personal preference and your mileage may vary. Now I'm not making this video to tell you what to do with your sound system or that you should or should not set your speakers to large. It really is complicated and it depends. I'm only sharing my experiences with you in hopes that you'll come away from this video 
with a bit more knowledge and understanding of this topic and discussion so you can make the right decision in your own home theater. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And hey, while you're down there, be sure to ring the bell icon so you never miss out when I upload a new video. Thank you so much for watching and I will catch you in the next one.